These are selected scenes from the 166 minute long Making Motorcycle Gas Tanks DVD. Check out all the Covell DVDs at covell.biz. That's kind of a rough sketch, but I think that's more or less the shape I want to have for this tank. And we'll put a soot coating on this piece of material. And then we'll heat the metal until the soot film burns off. And that's all there is to annealing aluminum. We'll be working with a mallet and a sandbag. And basically we just place the metal on top of the bag and work into the bag with the mallet until we get a shape like what we want. So the next step will focus on smoothing this rather lumpy surface we've created. A little bit bumpy to start with because of the large undulations left by the mallet and sandbag. But we'll get it smoothed up pretty quickly. This part is fairly smooth at this point. So both halves are shaped now and they match pretty well. So I'll be making the pattern for the top of the tank from chipboard. And now we're ready to mark our pattern. And I'll just use a pencil for this. And now we can pull this apart and trim our pattern to size. So now that our part is annealed, the next step is to put it into the rough shape that matches the tank. So I'll just bend it against the table. And we'll start at the front and work toward the back. Okay, that's close enough for now. And then the next step is that we'll start doming this using the mallet and sandbag. Okay, we're pretty close to having a good fit on this part. So we'll start the metal through the rolling over dies. The bottom die has a stop on its edge and I make sure that as I roll the metal through the machine, I keep the edge of the metal tight against that stop on the lower die. So I've made tack wells spaced no more than an inch apart along this whole seam. And what's next is I want to align the metal at the seam with the hammer and dolly in preparation for the welding process. So now that we're certain that the metal is at the same level at the joint, we're ready to come in with the oxy-acetylene torch and complete this weld. So it takes a few special things to make an oxy-acetylene weld. You need to use a special flux. This is aluminum welding flux and it comes as a powder which you mix with water to make a light paste. And then that paste is brushed onto the joint both on the inside and out. And it takes a special welding lens. This flux gives off a very bright yellow glare when heated and you can't see through that glare unless you have a special lens. When welding aluminum, you lay the torch down a little flatter than you would for welding steel. And it's a good idea to move pretty rapidly. So here's our finished weld. You can see it's come out to be fairly uniform. And the next step is I'm going to use a hammer and dolly to hammer this weld down flat. Okay, that looks pretty good. So by using the slap hammer and the egg dolly, I've been able to smooth out this area that was flattened partially by the planishing hammer. I've made a fixture that allows me to rotate the part and hold it firmly in place while I work on it. So I'm going to lock this into position. And the first step of metal finishing is to run lightly over the surface with the file. What this does is to clearly show us where any low spots are.
So the file only touches the high spots. Anything left unfiled we know is a little bit below grade. So the next step is to start working up the low spots and I'll be doing that with this bullseye pick. It's an ingenious device. When you squeeze the handle, the tip of it comes up right into the center of this sort of gun sight affair. So uh, we put the gun sight over any low spot we want to raise, squeeze the handle, and that very nicely brings up the low spots. And then we'll draw the file over it again. This time the low spots are about half the size they were previously. So we've completely metal finished the tank now. And I think you can see that it's very smooth. All the contours are very continuous. And we're ready now to make a pattern for the bottom of the tank. So we're zeroing in on the shape that we need. Okay, I think we're ready to try this back on the tank. See how our fit is coming. I actually think we have a pretty nice transition between these two shapes now. The next step is to roll it through the rotary machine to curl the edges over. You can do the same work with a hammer and dolly. The only advantage of the rotary machine is it's both faster and you tend to get a more consistent radius working this way. And what's next is we'll scribe this and trim it so it's a perfect fit. I've gone ahead and fitted carefully the bottom of the tank to match the shape of the top and it's tack welded into place at this point. So I'm going to TIG weld this bottom seam. I want to demonstrate that both oxyacetylene and TIG welding are good processes to use. And after the weld is in place, we'll sand the weld down and we'll be ready to fit the tunnel into the tank. So here's the finished weld, ready for sanding. Okay, I think we're just about finished filing the weld area smooth. We're going to fit the tunnel into the tank next. I've had this tunnel made out of especially thick aluminum. This is eighth inch thick aluminum. I've had it formed on a press break with a radius die. So I've used the TIG welding machine to join the tunnel to the tank. So we'll go ahead and weld in the threaded bung for the petcock. We'll sand this weld to make it smooth and we'll have ourselves a gas tank. It takes a little development of hand skills to be able to make metal as smooth as this. But if you're willing to use a little bit of filler, then the metal working doesn't have to be done to this degree of perfection. Learn metalworking and welding from a master, Cobell DVDs, the standard of the industry.